Guys, uh, I got I got I got another pleasant surprise for you guys. I have a little nightcap for you, huh? You thought the show was over? No, we got one more comedian. We have one more comedian for you, uh, and he's gonna he's gonna gently land this plane of a show. So please, big round of applause for Chad Foglin. this show. I know everybody who's on this show. Why not me do comedy now? <laughs> I've had enough to drink. <laughs> they say, they say, the early bird gets the worm. Well, that's just them trying to get you to get up early so that you can start your day and make the most of it. Well, I think that's bullshit. I think it should be the earthworm that sleeps in doesn't get eaten. <laughs> that's right. I think you should sleep in. I think you should enjoy your rest. Get your beauty sleep. Why not? Why? Because I'm lazy. <laughs> I love doing nothing. Of the list of everything you could do in the world. At the top of my list, nothing! <laughs> nothing. How many people here miss the mandatory shutdown? <laughs> yes, yes, me too. You know why? Because we have the perfect excuse to do what? Nothing! <laughs> my wife would come up to me and she'd say, let's go to the beach. And I'd be like, oh! COVID! <laughs> I've got to sit here on the couch and do nothing! <laughs> My mother-in-law, she'd come over and she'd say, Don't you think you should get a job? And I'd be like, Whoa! COVID! <laughs> i got to sit here on the couch and watch old episodes of Night Court! <laughs> There's only one place I'd go during the shutdown. One place I would brave the COVID wasteland. <laughs> And every time I got to the liquor store, <laughs> the guy behind the counter would always say the same thing. Another bottle of whiskey? And they'd be like, oh, sir! Go ahead! I have seen all nine episodes of the Night Court, and I don't know what to do next. I am stressed out. <laughs> Why'd I go mix it there? Nobody knows. Two bottles of whiskey this week! Uh, give it up for the people who performed tonight. Honestly, like... It's not, it's not easy doing this. And I, I, I forget it. I've been doing it for a long time. I don't want to brag. 20 years. Um, I've been doing it for a long time. And, and uh, you know, when I started, I will... I'll say this. You're lucky you didn't get the same advice I got when I first started doing stand-up. Um, at a very young age, I knew that I wanted to be essentially Steve Martin because I was raised on Saturday Night Live and uh, rated R movies of the 80s and 70s. Uh, I'm t For context, I turned 45 on Sunday. <laughs> I know, I get a Super Bowl. That's right, America. When you turn 45, America gives you a fucking Super Bowl. Uh, that's my birthday gift. No, uh, when I was eight years old, my father, there's a classic interview in my family where my dad had a VHS camera and he recorded all these shit. And um, when I was eight years old, he's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, and I'd just seen The Lonely Guy, a Steve Martin movie. So as proud as I could, in uh, my eight-year-old voice, I was like, a lonely guy! <laughs> because basically I wanted to be Steve Martin. And um, uh, later in life, when I was in high school, I was about to graduate, and I was sitting down with a conversation with my high school guidance counselor, and he's like, what do you want to do with your life? And I, you know, this is the moment. I was like, ah, oh, no one's really asked me this for a long time. And, and you know, I was a little more articulate. I knew that I knew what I really wanted to be. I didn't want to be a lonely guy. <laughs> I got it. Uh, I was like, I want to be a comedian. I want to do like acting. I want to make people laugh. I want to be funny. And my guidance counselor said, No. 
That's too hard. You're not good at that. Nah, you, you should just draw. That's what you're good at. You're good at art. Go to art college. So I did. So I went to art college with my dreams crushed. Uh, and after four years of art college, the bug was still there. I was like, oh, I, I feel like I still want to do comedy. I still want to do this. Uh, so I found an open mic in Georgia. I went to school in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, and I signed up and I did my three minutes. First time I've ever got up on stage. And the host after the show came up to me and said, you know what? You're terrible. <laughs> you shouldn't do comedy. Don't ever do this again. And I, what he didn't know was that like, as soon as I got on stage, as soon as I picked up that microphone, like I, everything clicked. I felt like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. It took me 23 fucking years to get here, but this is where I'm supposed to be. I mean, I didn't get any applause, no laughs. <laughs> And, and, and people seem to really hate me. <laughs> but it still felt right. So uh, I ended up graduating and then deciding, let's not get a job in art. Let's just, uh, let's, let's go down the path of like trying to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> so uh, I went back to Nebraska where I was born and raised and I did stand up there for a while. To the point where um, still not a lot of laughs, uh, a lot of ill reception. One time a drunken farmer paid me $50 to get off stage. <laughs> that's how good I was, that's how good things were going. It was like, yes, we're doing it. So at one point I said, you know what, fuck this. I'm gonna move to Los Angeles. Because, you know, why not? I wanna see, I wanna see how many people I can get to hate me, I guess. <laughs> so let's go to a big city where I can get lots of people to hate me. So I was living in Los Angeles and you now there's a, there's a lot of open mics there, and it, you know it's 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 a situation where you 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 put your name in a hat, and then they draw it, and then if you're lucky enough to be one of the 30 people who had their name drawn out, then you get like two minutes at the store, the comedy store, or like same kind of thing at the Laugh Factory. It, it's fucking rough. It's rough uh, there in LA. But one day, I saw on the LA Weekly, a weekly publication in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that Steve Martin was going to be doing a book signing. Now this never happens. This is like really fucking rare. Like, Steve Martin does not do this. And, and it stated that he was going to sign any book that he's ever written. And I was like, holy shit, this is fucking nuts. This is crazy. I can't go to this. <laughs> I can't. This would be, I'd be like, a, uh, I'd be terrible. This, this would be like, I'd just be like a big fucking fanboy. I can't do this. I can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. The last minute I said, oh yeah, I guess I need to do this. <laughs> so I took Cruel Shoes, which is the first book he ever wrote. Uh, if you haven't ever read it, you should. It's very funny. Um, I have several copies. <laughs> <laughs> it is my catcher in the rye. <laughs> uh, and I, I got there and I stood in line, there's a big line, and um, the girl in front of me told this story to everyone in line. She was like, oh my God, you guys, seriously, three weeks ago, I was living in Minnesota and I had this dream where I was making out with Steve Martin in front of a library in Los Angeles. And I was like, I don't wanna live in Los Angeles. Oh my God, but guys, here's the thing. Every time I have a dream where I make out with somebody, it comes to our life. I heard this story at, at, at least a dozen times, if not more. She told everybody in line. We're waiting in line, everything's fine, blah, blah, blah. We finally get to the end, and there he is. There's Steve Martin, he's sitting at a desk. He's signing books. It's very exciting. Uh, and she goes up, and of course she says, Oh my God, Steve Martin. Three years ago, I was living in Minnesota, and I had a dream where I was making out with you in front of a library in Los Angeles. And I was like, I'm not going to move to LA, but here I am, and here's the thing, Steve Martin. Every time I have a dream where I make out with somebody, it comes to John Alive. <laughs> and Steve Martin, as cool as a motherfucker he is, just signed her book, looked up, and said, Well, I'll be at the Santa Monica Library at 7 p.m. tonight. And she's like, ah! <laughs> Like, just fucking melts away. So like, now it's my turn. It's my turn to step up. I had two things that I had planned. <laughs> 
I wanted to give him cruel shoes, which when he saw that, I was the only one in line that had cruel shoes. So he said, oh, I haven't seen this one in a while. I was like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and then also, uh, back in the day when Steve Martin was like doing stand-up before he really got into movies, he used to give people, in lieu of giving them an autograph, uh, if someone asked for an autograph, he'd give them this card that said, this is a proof that you met Steve Martin. <laughs> you may have, you may have noticed. So we, when I moved to LA, I had cards printed up that had my autograph on one side and the other side was a certificate of authenticity with my website on it. It's just, so essentially what I would do is when I saw a celebrity and, and it's fine, you can leave. Um, <laughs> it's, it's only getting to the good part. <laughs> But when I would see a celebrity in LA, I would go up to them and I'd say, how about an autograph? And if they said yes, I'd give them mine and then fucking walk away. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, it was super fun. Another time I'll tell you about the 36 people, the famous people that I gave my autograph to. Cuba Gooding Jr. was the one who did not understand it. He chased me down the street. <laughs> Which is weird to be think when you have like Cuba Gooding Jr. Like, like, wait, no, I have the autograph. I'm like, no, you got mine, leave me alone. <laughs> That's not how it works! <laughs> so I, I gave him my autograph, and Steve Martin looked at it, realized what it was, and stood up and shouted to the whole line, like, See! Look! It's not just about you! Maybe I want an autograph, too! <laughs> and I went, Oh! Confidence level rising! And then, before I knew it, I couldn't help myself. It just came out. <laughs> I said, oh my God, Steve Martin, uh, about uh, three years ago, I was living in Nebraska, and uh, I, I was making out with you in front of a meat market in Los Angeles, and I woke up and I said, well, I'm not gay, but now here I am. <laughs> and he looked me dead in the eye. He nodded his head and he said, that was funny. <laughs> so to this day, if I ever see my high school guidance counselor or that prick who ran that open mic in Savannah, Georgia, I have one thing to say to them. Fuck you. <laughs> Never give up. If you think you're funny, you're funny. Now good night. Jeff Bonglin. Guys, thank you so much for coming out to Hop Yard tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. And all the comedians you've seen perform tonight. What a wonderful show. Thank you so much for coming out.